Hey everybody, it's your girl Mimi of Mimi's Mocha Treats. And today I am going to show you how I created this realistic bowl of ramen. Now, as we all know, summer is finally here. Thank God. <laughs> but the one thing I always miss around this time of year is a good warm bowl of pho or ramen. Now, yeah, 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 I know you can enjoy these delightful broths year round, but I don't crave them during the hot days of summer. My go-to is a good scoop of world-class chocolate ice cream on a sugar cone, and that is a shout out to Baskin Robbins. Now, <laughs> let's get back to this cake. So I started off with seven and eight inch rounds that I carved into the shape of a bowl. Once I got my desired shape, I filled and crumb coated it in buttercream. Now I set that aside and began working on the food elements. But you know, when researching photos of ramen, I came across this restaurant in Tokyo called Noodle in a Haystack. If anybody has traveled to Tokyo and you've been there, hey, I would love to hear about your experience. But they actually specialize in roast beef ramen. Now see, I was always under the impression that flank steak or pork belly were the red meats of choice when it came to ramen. See, I typically order vegetarian or seafood, so seeing this ultra red meat in the photo kind of threw me off. But when I was coloring the meat, which was actually made from modeling chocolate, I focused on creating a dark pink undertone, then going over that with a mix of magenta and blue to get a purpley shade of a cool tone. For the edges, I used a bit of magenta and green to get a shade of taupe or brown, and then added a hint of black to darken. Listen, I really need to think about buying stocks and Wegmans paper towels. <laughs> because one thing is for certain, you will always see a used one crumbled up next to me. Ooh, it's pitiful. Once I finished making the meat, I sh you know, sprayed a little bit of sheen to on it to give it a little shiny effect. And then I started modeling eggs from modeling chocolate along with the green onions. Now, as I was cutting the chocolate green onions, the cut part would close up and I would have to take a needle tool to open the section up again and again and again. And it just started becoming too time consuming. I then had the bright idea of threading the needle tool through the roll and then cutting the pieces while it was on the needle. Now I still had to go back in there, but it saved me a lot of time and worked out pretty great. So next it was time to make the bamboo shoots. I used the leftover brown from the meat and lightly added it to the edges of the chocolate bamboo pieces to add a little bit of depth to them. Um, once I was done with that, I put everything to the side and then proceeded to work on making the sushi paper. Once done, I put everything to the side and started covering the cake and fondant. 
Now I wanted to try my hand at making fondant and I used Yenner's Way recipe for a tapioca starch fondant. I am in love! It was so easy to mix and there is no gelatin or marshmallows. So it's a great fondant for those who avoid gelatin in their diets. The stretch was amazing and it will be my go-to recipe for display cakes. I will put a link to the recipe in the description box below. Now after covering the cake, I wanted a hammered bowl effect and this is when I lost a lot of footage due to a wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> now I will not share what that malfunction, that malfunction was, but while editing, I saw it and when I tell you I was in my office shedding tears of laughter. <laughs> I am so glad I caught it because baby, it would have been a disaster. Entertaining possibly, but still a disaster. To make the noodles, I placed fondant in my monster clay extruder. And then I took those pieces and placed them in on the cake where I wanted them. And then what I did was I went back to my pre-made color palette and used the taupe mixed with a hint of ivory and then watered down the color with extract. I wanted to add just a hint of the color to the noodles so they would look cooked in the gelatin broth. Okay, here I am adding the edge to the cake, you know, like the rim around the bowl. Um, and what I did was, is I colored the outside of the bowl with the magenta and blue to give that purple look. Um, again, this is where I missed the side footage. And so you will not actually see <laughs> the paint on the side of the cake. Um, I went back and gold lustered the rim because I wanted the trim around the bowl to be gold. Um, and you also see here that I actually placed the food pieces where I wanted them so that I had a good idea of where they would be located before I poured in the gelatin. Um, I then colored wafer paper in petal dust in shades of forest green and black. Once that was done, I placed it to the side for assembly. Now, some words of advice, wear a mask when covering large areas in petal dust because once those particles get in your nose, you better be prepared for a sneezing session. Okay, the gelatin. I cannot tell you how many times I made it, but finally it worked out. And then I started to add all of the little pieces to it to give the finished effect of a bowl of ramen. So I hope you have enjoyed watching this video and I hope you also picked up some tricks to use on your cakes at home. And as always, I thank you for watching and I hope you have an amazingly sweet day.